Hey everyone, it's Anthony from Pretty Printed here. In today's video, I want to quickly introduce you to model form sets in Django. So, form sets in general are a way to kind of have repeated forms in Django. So, an example would be, let's say you want to have a form that takes in phone numbers and someone could potentially have multiple phone numbers. Instead of having one form, you'd have a form set that can represent all the potential phone numbers they have instead of just the one. So model form sets are basically the same idea, but using a model as the base of the form, like a model form. So that's what I'm going to demonstrate in this video. So I've already created a few things. I've created this example app. And what I'll do first is I'll create a model and this model is going to be simple since it's just an example. So um, I'll just call this example. So models.model. And then I'll give it a name. This will be a Carville. And then I'll give it two text inputs. So name and uh, location. So this doesn't really mean anything. It's just a simple example. So now that I have the model, I want to create the form set based off of it. So what I'm going to do inside of my view here, and before I actually do this, let me migrate. So make migrations and then migrate. Okay, and I'll also add this to the admin since I have that open, so. Uh, from models import example and then I'll register that okay so if I run this again okay I see my example table here and there's nothing in it of course so what I want to do now in the view is the first thing I want to do is I want to actually create a form set based off of that model. So I don't have to create a form because I'm going to use something that's kind of similar to a model form, except it's a model form set. So to do that, I need to use the model form set factory. And what this model form set factory will do is create a class for me to then use as a regular form set. So from uh, Django.forms, and it creates a class for me to use it as a form, I should say, not a form set but you'll see how it works in a second. So model form set underscore factory is what I want to import. And I also want to import the model itself. So example. So now what I'm going to do is create the example form set. So I take the model form set factory and I pass in the name of the model. So example, and I also pass in the fields that I'm interested in. So this kind of looks like a model form, except the way you create is a little bit different, but the idea is similar. So the fields that I want are name and location. So now that I have that, what I can do is I can actually instantiate the form. So form is going to be equal to example form set and then I will just pass this to the template. So form is going to be form. And then inside the template, I'll just put form here so we can see what happens. So server should be running. Uh, no module named example.model. So let's see, views and somewhere I messed up. Let's see, what line is it? What line is this? Oh, line three. So in views, line three. Oh, from models, not model. Okay, so that should work. And now when I refresh it, I see the form that I have, but I only see one input. So the idea behind form sets is that you can have multiple inputs. And basically by default, it's how many additional inputs you want to appear after the, the existing ones that you have. So in this particular case, I have no existing ones, but if I were to add something to the database, so let me do that right now. So first, first like that. 
So I save. So I have something in the database now. So when I refresh, I see the first thing that I just added. And now I have an empty one. So by default, I always get one empty one over what I have in the first place. So let me change this so it's formatted a little better. So I'll just say as P. And we see I have the first here. Now, you don't always want that information to appear. So what you want to do is you want to set the query set in the form if necessary. So query set is a parameter. And what I can do is something like example.objects none. And what this will do is it will return nothing. And I get what I had in the first place, which is just one input for the form. And of course, this query can be anything. So where this will come into play is how you're using this form. So if this is the first time you're using the form, like a, for a creation screen, then you would want a query like this where it returns nothing because you will want the form to be empty. You just want the users to enter new data. But in a case where you're on a screen like an edit screen, maybe you want all the information for that particular user. So this query would then be a query to get information for that one user who is logged in. By default, it just gets everything that the model has. So even if you have multiple users, by default it gets the information for all the users, which isn't something that you would want. So you do have to change this query to be something that is specific to that user. So, you know, check where the user ID is equal to that uh, current logged in user. So I'll remove this for now so we can see this. And if you want to have multiple inputs, you just spec specify extra in the model form set factory. So right now extra defaults to one, but if I set extra equal to four, we'll see what happens. So now I still have the first entries. Then I have one, two, three, four sets of name and location. So now what I'll do is I'll fill in the rest of the form around this. So form method post action I'll leave that blank. It's just going to be the same endpoint. And then input type submit. So just a really basic form here. So when I look at this again, I can actually submit. So what I want to do now is I want to handle the post case. So I'll go back to the view and I'll say something like if request.method is post. I'm going to instantiate the form set with request.post. And then what I can do is I can use this in a similar way that I use model form. So I can say something like um, form.save, and this will save all of the, of the values. And if I want to save them individually, I'll do commit false, and then I can return something like instances and then say for instance in instances, instance.save. So these individual ones behave like single forms where this is saving all of the form set at one time. If I took out the commit equals false because commit defaults to true. So either approach works. I'll comment that out and I'll just use the straightforward approach. So uh, instances equals form.save. And then, of course, I can do whatever I want past this point. And then if it is a regular form, I can instantiate it again, since in this case, the query is going to pick up everything. So let's go ahead and try this. Just saved it. So second, third, fourth, and I'll leave the fifth one blank. So I'll submit this, and it tells me, cross site request forgery is failed or the token is failed. So I'll just add that in there. Okay. So second, third, fourth, and then submit. Okay. So now we see I have first, second, third, and fourth here, and I have four additional fields. And if I look in the admin dashboard, uh, even though I didn't give them names so you can see them here you see the four objects that i have so this is like the third and this is the fourth so this is just a really basic overview of model form sets in django 
if you want to know more, uh, just let me know in the comments below because I do want to make more videos about this. So tell me exactly what you want to know about model form sets or just form sets in general and I can make a video. As you can see from my channel, I haven't been making that many videos lately so I could use some ideas on what to make next. So just leave a comment down below and I'll continue talking about model form sets in Django in the future. So that's it for this video. If you have any questions about this, uh, apart from any suggestions, just leave a comment down below and I'll get to them. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel already, please subscribe. So thank you for watching and I will talk to you next time.